So I usually end with a case. We have a 20-year-old uh, male. Kind of ties together everything that I've been talking about, and it shows the power of it. That's why I end with this with this case. But so we had a 20-year-old male who started out with right-sided low back pain. You probably either experience or know somebody who deals with back pain. Very, very, very prominent source of our chronic pain. But this was a you know, pretty young individual, 20 years old, and very active, played a lot of basketball, worked out. One day playing basketball, he experienced some pretty bad pain in his low back. Thinking, okay, you know, I just did something working out, playing basketball, uh, no big deal, you know, I'll just rest it. Pain kept getting worse, pain kept getting worse. Over time, uh, this individual could actually barely walk. I mean, every step was pretty excruciating. So he eventually went to a sports medicine specialist. They took an x-ray of his low back. And there were degenerative changes in the low back, uh, what they call the sacroiliac joint. It's where your sacrum right here, that your low back you know, meets your spine. It's at actually the base of your spine. And there's a joint there, what they call the sacroiliac joint. And you can see the degenerative changes on the right side. It was different than the left side. There was no doubt about it. The sports medicine specialist sent this individual to a rheumatologist. And the rheumatologist made a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, at 20 years old, this, this was pretty devastating for that individual. Like, how could I have this at such a young age? But, you know, the rheumatologist used the tools that he had that he knew very well meaning, which were the NSAIDs. Those worked for about three to four months. They were very powerful for this individual. It's like, wow, that pain is reduced. I mean, if you've taken an NSAID or know somebody has, they do work pretty quick of taking down that inflammation. I mean, you do have a reduction in pain. You can, you have better mobility. So this individual could start, you know, doing things again that he was able to do, playing basketball, working out. The problem is after about four months, the pain came back went back to the rheumatologist and said, well, these were working, but it's not as effective as it was. And we talked about building up that tolerance. Individuals eventually put on the opioid painkillers that we talked about. Uh, Vicodin, actually very powerful opioid. Just one at first, that again took the pain level down. Again, worked for about three to four months, but then it wore off. Uh, individual goes back to the rheumatologist says, listen, it worked great, but now, you know, the pain is back again. I don't have that same mobility. It's, it's, it's getting worse. Uh, different inset. The individual was put on, you know, a higher dosage, trying a different inset, and then eventually put on, you know, more opioids. And then when they didn't work, periodically put on corticosteroids to try to knock down that inflammation for a time period. Uh, it was only about one to two weeks of the corticosteroids, but that would happen, especially when there were flare-ups. This individual also experienced, you know, extreme malabsorption and a lot of fatigue. Head pain uh, in the spine, uh, the ribs, low back, hips, and knees. Where's a lot of this, where the pain was in this individual. The diagnosis after it was about 10 years was actually switched to ankylosing spondylitis. Most people haven't heard of that condition. It's, it's pretty rare. Most people haven't heard of it. But what it is, it's unlike rheumatoid arthritis you've probably heard of. Rheumatoid arthritis will attack your wrists, the hands, the ankles, the feet. Mainly, it can attack any joint, but mainly the joints that they call on the periphery of the body. Ankylosing spondylitis is different because it's mainly inflammation of the entire spine. It can attack the whole spine, again, the ribs, and mainly the hips, what they call the axial skeleton, right in the center, as opposed to the hands and feet of rheumatoid arthritis. So the diagnosis was eventually ankylosing spondylitis in this individual, but with the medications, some of them are similar to rheumatoid arthritis, like the NSAIDs and the opioids. This shows you everything that that individual went through. So that was about age 20 years old. Six years later at 26, things really started to get worse and go downhill for this individual. Mind you, this is six years after the painkillers, the NSAIDs, the corticosteroids. Now the individual starts getting extreme anxiety, fatigue, headaches, heart palpitations, you name it. That kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, that these things don't happen in isolation. You usually see a lot of symptoms and pathology together. So a lot of blood work was done, uh, EKG, the 
put the suction cups you know, on your chest to track the electrical conductivity of your heart, chest x-ray, MRI in the brain, uh, EEG, where they stick the things to your head, to measure the brain waves, everything came back negative. Individuals diagnosed with anxiety attacks put on Ativan, other anti-anxiety medications. The patient was on these for about a year, and after a year, they just couldn't take them because you just couldn't function normally. So the turning point came seven years later, at the age of 27, uh, being on these opioids, these NSAIDs, these corticosteroids, the individual goes back to the rheumatologist and says, listen, I, I'm in extreme pain. I can barely walk. The pain at night, it, it's horrendous. I can't sleep. The rheumatologist says, I, I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can do. I have tried every medication. We've tried every dose, every name. We've put you on the highest dose of the opioid painkillers that can. The corticosteroids aren't doing it. I, there's nothing else I can do. You're too young to put you on a higher dose of medication. It, it will ruin your liver. You're just too young, 27 years old. That was a turning point for this individual because this individual was given no other options, pretty much just on their own at this point. So what this individual did is just on their own, start researching natural therapies. Okay, I don't have any other options here, but I'd like to improve my quality of life without constantly experiencing these side effects. So the individual researched you know, anti-inflammatory foods, we kind of talked about that a little bit, but supplements and certain exercises that would take down this inflammation, that would help with this pain. So the patient eventually got off of all of the prescription medication, which should always be medically supervised and guided. I mean, that has to be a slow, slow process. And that's what this individual did over a course of a period of time, very slowly, you know, weaned off all the medications, uh, very safely, very slowly. So the pain was still about a six to a nine out of a 10, though. And the flare-ups that happened with autoimmunity, with chronic inflammation, were happening about twice a week. When the flare-ups were there, the pain was 10 out of 10. The individual could barely walk, could barely get out of bed. But it was a success because you know he was off the of prescription medications, but still in a lot of pain, but just you know, being able to live without being dependent on that. So after about one to two years of these natural therapies, of this anti-inflammatory diets, uh, this nutritional protocol, these supplements, these exercises, taking down the pain, progress was made. The pain you can see though know, that this does take time. You know, the individual had it for seven years. So when you take that in the context of seven years of having this, one to two years, you know, that is a long time, but it's still, progress is made that quickly after seven years. That's, that's still really good. So pain goes down to about four to a seven out of 10. And instead of the flare-ups being twice a week, now they're only twice a month. So we're seeing continued progress here. Still taking over the counter center and when there were flare ups to be able to sleep at night. But we know, and I talked about that, what that can do to the GI tract. So you wouldn't see occasional blood in the stool from the damage that was doing the GI tract. So, what is the patient's uh, current treatment? It's an individualized nutritional protocol where this individual is right now. Um, and again, so why does this nutritional <laughs> protocol work? and you guys know that very well now, is to heal the gut lining and to shut off that chronic inflammation. That's what this individual did. That's why the progress was made without those medications because the individual was supporting the body at the source, at the most basic level we talked about, and that's healing that gut lining. So that shut off that chronic inflammation and also the mitochondrial support. The individual started to support the mitochondria to give the building blocks for that energy production. So those two things were done. And then a specialized exercise program called foundation training. And remember, this individual's condition was inflammation of the entire spine. Uh, what that disease eventually does is somebody, you know, I'm standing here straight up, but ankylosing spondylitis because it's constant inflammation and breakdown of the spine. It takes the body and the posture and like this. If you've ever seen anybody you know, walking like that, they might have had AS. Because that chronic inflammation, it fuses the spine together. You should have your vertebrae, a disc, and a vertebrae. Well, that shouldn't be solid and all fused together. But because of the chronic inflammation in the spine of these individuals, it fuses the spine. So once they're in that posture, 
they can't come out of that, so they'll walk like that. That's what it does, it constantly breaks it down. So that's why the sex exercise program foundation training was so effective for that individual, because it strengthens the muscles of the back and it supports the spine to keep them like this. Because when we're driving, we're sitting, you know, we're like that. But for somebody with this condition, it is essential that they stay upright. And that's what that did. You can see right here, what they call the muscles of the posterior chain in our back. So whether that's our hamstrings, our glutes, and all of our back muscles, if that strengthened, that'll take us out of this posture and bring us into this. And that's very important because when our posture isn't correct, when we're not upright, that causes a breakdown of those joints and those discs in our spine. And again, so if any time we have that breakdown, that's going to lead to the inflammation, and then that's going to lead to pain because it's part of that degeneration. So if we you know, bring our posture from this to this, well, that brings that spine into alignment of how it should be, then we slow that degeneration. We slow that breakdown. We stop the inflammation. We stop the pain. So you can see that it's internal, the nutrition, the mitochondrial support, but then external too with those exercises. It was very powerful. So where is this patient today after all those interventions? So remember I told you from age 20 to 27, the individual is on those medications, those NSAIDs, those opioids, those corticosteroids. And you can see all the things that started to happen. Well, we started with the chronic pain, we had chronic fatigue, we had extreme anxiety, we had headaches, we had heart palpitations, all those symptoms from age 20 to 27. Today, where this individual is, is from age 27 to 36. So that's a nine year period now. We had a seven year period where they kept getting worse, worse, and worse. Well, for the last nine years, this individual has been on no prescription medications. Even more than that, they have the least amount of pain they've ever had in 18 years. That pain fluctuation was zero to a two out of 10. This individual, for about 15 years, never thought they'd experience a day without pain. Never thought that it would be possible. So the fact that they achieved a zero out of 10 pain after 15 years living in chronic pain, it is absolutely life-changing. A lot of people say it's too extreme. They say, well, that nutritional protocol is supporting your body in that way, like we talked about the GI tract, the mitochondria, doing that certain exercise program, they say to that individual, that is too extreme to keep that up. And I say it's not, because that was my case. If I am the individual in that case, that is my story. That's what I went through. And over 15 of those years, this is what it felt like to live in my body. I have ankylosing spondylitis, and I've had it for almost 18 years. But 15 of you, those years, that was my life. I know what it's like to live with chronic pain. I know what it's like to live with chronic fatigue. And today, my life is like that after 18 